of people and actually even more past that um how many lives you can change in a village and some of the surrounding areas interesting looks like we're about to start the other thing you did dave is uh, probably we drink a lot of beer <laughs> gotcha okay he's not wrong <laughs> the best shrimp pizza I ever had was in Chola Checa. Wow. Because there's like this little hotel we stay at the first night before we go on down. And, you know, you run into people you didn't even know was down there, like Dick Powers. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> sounds intriguing. I'd, I'd love to get involved next time that's a possibility. Absolutely. Uh -oh. And this club also does stuff in Belize as well. Okay. So we'd be happy to talk about offline what we're doing internationally. Thank you. All right. So Betsy's doing something. Oh, she rang the bell. Peace, Mario. I love seeing this crowd. We welcome go. everyone to the welcome everyone to the noon meeting of the Brentwood Rotary Club. We're so glad to have you here. Hello, Zoom folks. Glad to have you guys in as well. Hello. Today we've got the prayer with Bart King and Pledge and Four Way Test with Warren Bryan. Uh, two weeks ago, when I had the prayer. Uh, as I told you, I, I write my prayers. So my friend Donna, I shared it with her, and she said, uh, Bart, you're not preaching, you're praying. <laughs> I said, okay. Okay, so this, I'll, I'll take another stab at it. So uh, I, I, this one is more Rotarian prayer. But um, something I want, want to mention to you, you know, the, the things of this earth that we hold dear to our hearts, we long for, they're not ours at all. They're just borrowed. Jesus lets us use them. Think about it. Let us pray. Lord, we're back again, this time just to praise your wonderful name, thanking you for the opportunity of calling you Father and having you include us as Rotarians in your family of believers, trusting in you that our names will be called out when the saints go marching in. Thank you for life, health, goodness, and more importantly, for your mercy. Thank you for watching over us and caring for us and for your love for us. In some special way, we pray that each of us will, will receive a blessing from coming together, even though it may be small. We will be so grateful. Give us faith, strength, and courage to face the temptations and disappointments of this life. Forgive us for having called evil good and good evil. Tune our hearts to the rights of others and make us responsive to their needs. Fill us with compassion. Enliven us with your love that we may continue in our resolve to struggle toward your truth and our relationship with each other. You know our struggles and you accompany, accompany us along the way. Bless those who are less fortunate than we. Continue to bless us that we may be a blessing to others. Keep us strong, that we may help the weak. Keep us uplifted, that we may have words of encouragement for others. Bless this food to our bodies, thus thy service. In thy name we pray, amen. Say and do. First, second, third, and fourth. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We've got a full list of guests today. We do have one visiting Rotarian. Um, 
I would like to congratulate Rod Freeman for increasing our attendance uh, single-handedly. Although I am a little disappointed as a former collegiate mascot at Auburn University who may or may not have gotten into an altercation with Mr. Commodore during my time there <laughs> that I was not invited to the collegiate athletes table today, but we'll make sure that happens next time. Um, we do have one visiting Rotarian, uh, Daryl Blocker is joining us uh, for the second time, I believe, uh, from the Jasper, Indiana uh, club, but he has recently re relocated to Middle Tennessee. Uh, Daryl, whereabouts in town are you living? Well, we would love for you to consider uh, our club, and we're glad that you're joining us. And He's also, enjoy your time here today. Daryl's also past president of, of his past president of the Jasper club, Indiana yes. Club. Um, so, thank you for joining us, Daryl. Uh, Ted Alanchilian has a guest today. I'm gonna let him introduce Mike Ogle. Hey, good morning, everybody. I have Mike as my guest today. Mike Ogle, so uh, happy to have him hey, here. Hey, Mike. Jim Villers has a guest, Steve Robinson. <laughs> Welcome, Steve. Welcome, Big Daddy. <laughs> We're glad you're with us. Bart King has a returning guest who is returning after having visited with us once. So that's that's a good sign, Bart. <laughs> Hey, um, my pleasure to in introduce my good friend, Donna Kirby. Uh, I shared some things with you about her when we were here before. Uh, some of it's a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun. Uh, she is the gardener at our church, and she says that I'm in an elevated position. So, uh, uh, oh. Charles Grumman, Mark King, I don't know. Charles Grumman, something on Facebook. Flowers. Yours. Gardener, so she wanted to see my flowers. So she texted me and told me she'd be able to see my flowers. I got all excited because I thought she was coming to see me. And a few minutes before she came, she said, I'm bringing my daughter. Said, oh, okay. So anyway, uh, I asked her for a date. She said, uh, uh, let, me, let me check my calendar. I said, well, we can go Friday or Saturday, whatever day it was. She said, no, I only have 30 minutes. I said, well, that's enough. She said, no, I, I have to book you out for two hours. <laughs> two hours. So we met, and uh, it, later on in the afternoon, I said, uh, uh, when can I see you again? And she said, uh, tonight. I said, well, another hour would be tonight. <laughs> so Donna Kirk. Welcome, Donna. Thank you for joining us, Donna. Uh, Mark McFerrin has a guest, Ben Peterson. I think Bart needs to put in a bunch of money for that, that introduction. I do too. A bunch of money. Yeah, 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 that's good. My friend Ben Peterson, the newest Nashvilleian to this city. He moved here five, four days ago. I think he arrived. He closes on a house next week. He's from Michigan by way of Scottsdale, Arizona. I don't know if you've ever gotten a phone call from a friend who says, hey, I want you to meet somebody. And then he hands me the phone. And that's what he did with Ben back in April, cool. and, uh, and I've been a very blessed man to know you. Why? Because, uh, first of all, you're an eight-year Army veteran, and he's got a calling on his life to do something pretty heroic next Memorial Day 2022 to bring all the v Vietnam veterans together for a hero's honor. Awesome. A hero's honor, the honor... To give the, the Vietnam vets the, the honor that they never received when they came home. And there's a whole lot more to that. I'd love to talk to you about it. I'm sure you would as well. But he's been married less than a year. He's got his first kid on the way, and he's moving to our town. And this is not your first rotary rotary, I heard. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Rod Freeman. Welcome, ben. Thank you. I'm going to go around the table here. Uh, the fact that uh, Shane's here today as our guest gave me the opportunity to invite some uh, good friends that uh, Shane knows and they know Shane. So I'm going to start over here with Mark Elliott. Uh, he was a two-sport athlete at uh, Vanderbilt. He's now the athletic director at Trebekah. And if I miss this up, guys, you should just jump in there, okay? Uh, Ron Bargatze, he was my favorite college freshman coach. 
In fact, uh, <laughs> he and I started at Vanderbilt at the same time, and uh, uh, one of his business partners visits here a lot, Steve Hewlett. So uh, <laughs> glad to have you here today, uh, Coach. Uh, I want to jump over here and catch Barry Booker. Uh, Barry, actually, uh, he's the one that helped initiate or bring in the three-point shot. Uh, he and the bomb squad Yay. there at Vanderbilt uh, helped us familiarize ourselves with the three-point shot. So, uh, uh, and then uh, Barry's been a good friend, and I appreciate you being here. And uh, thanks, for, thanks very much. Uh, this knucklehead over here uh, <laughs> is my son, Richard Freeman. And he happens to be a classmate of Shane's from Vanderbilt. So, Rich, thanks for making it here. And we'll talk about Shane later, okay? Thank you. All right. Glad to have all of you here. Good to see you. Lastly, Beth Dormany uh, has a guest, Michelle LaFollette. This is Michelle, who's also a guest of Jane Covington, who's at the beach today. So she asked if I'd introduce her. But um, would you like to say a little something about yourself? Sure. I didn't get the mic. <laughs> 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 I'll send it back over. Um, I'm Michelle LaFollette. Thanks for having me. Um, this is my second time visiting the Brown Rotary Club, so I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Glad to have you back. <laughs> Barry, are you sure? <laughs> All right. Uh, I believe that's it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> now we want to know what you had to say is the bottom line. So just... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Works for you. Uh, happy Bucks, Beth Dormady again. Okay, who's happy? George is happy. Well, I'm I'm happy for a friend of mine and paying him back because uh, the esteemed Larry Kane uh, shot his age a, a couple of weeks ago, and wow. that's very hard to do. <laughs> I did it earlier this year, and I guarantee it's hard to do. I've come close to a sense, but anyway, he did it in a tournament condition. That's that much, uh, that's that much better. No, it's not your age. It's Larry's age. And I won't mention that, but it's a much better short score than 82. Who else is happy? Hi there. So um, during the pan during the quarantine last year, my mom passed away. She she had been, it was non COVID related and not and it was very expected. But my brother and I have had the opportunity to be going through her stuff just just recently. And I opened a photo album just yesterday um, to back up a little bit. My mom was a ro Rotarian for all my life uh, in a little club from Dawson Springs, Kentucky. I think they have twelve members or ten maybe. Um, and I found a whole fo photo album where everywhere we would travel when I was a teenager and adult, we would always go to a Rotary Club or find a Rotary Park. And there's a whole book of pictures of me and mom with the, the wheel, like in Brazil. And I don't really, really fun. So it, it made me smile. So I just wanted to share it. It's really cool. Yeah. Yay. We're glad you're carrying on the tradition. Jim Villers. Wow. That's awesome. A reminder to folks, if you don't use the microphone, the folks on Zoom can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting in some money for how happy Bart is. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm also putting in some money because the Ravenwood Raptors are going to put the whooping on the Brentwood Bears tonight. Nah. And we'll have to go over to that other side of the highway. Uh, but it's going to be a, a game. All right. Let's go, Raptors. Somebody's got to represent for the Bruins. We need more happy books. I'm happy that Rod Freeman's here. I used to watch Rod play at Vanderbilt. I was in kindergarten, and it was, a, it was half a century before – the three-point shot was around, but and it was in black and white on television too. Anyway, so uh, 
I'm happy because last night uh, we got to visit with Ron Bagetsi, Don and I, at the Hall of Fame banquet at, at Belmont. Very, very nice. Oh, did anybody hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm happy because last night Don and me attended the Hall of Fame uh, banquet at Belmont. Um, and I'm a Chaney Award winner of 1985 or six, somewhere along there. Anyway, we were with Ron, Ron Bagetsi last night. It was really nice. So I'm happy. He wants the mic. So we got it. I can't see a mic pass by and not say something. So I am, uh, I'm happy to be here among so many friends as Steve Robinson and Jim and one dollar for all that he had to say. Good <laughs> Lord. Um, and thanks to Rod for inviting me. And I, I think I spoke to this group if y'all met at a different yes, yeah. So uh you did. So uh, I'm feeling very much at home. So uh it is good to be with y'all. And there have been like 1200 people moved to Nashville since you did four days ago. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to challenge these two gentlemen over here. Uh, about the time that uh, Rod was playing basketball, there was a young guy playing for it was originally the Virginia Squires and then for a very brief time with the Knicks. His name was Luther T. Burden. And you talk about a guy who could shoot threes. This is a gentleman that I knew when he was still in high school up in Albany, New York. And he uh, could shoot this daylights out of uh, the, th the threes back then. And his nickname, this Tiki, came to him as early as ninth grade. And uh, he, he was quite a young man at that time. Thank you. All right. Good deal. A lot of basketball fans around. I love Thank it. Thank you. Anybody else happy? Sheila. Coming to this side. All right. So uh, I will concede as an alumni of Brentwood High School, I will concede the football game uh, to Kip and Ravenwood. But I am proud to announce I'm happy today that Brentwood destroyed Ravenwood in a category that probably matters a little more. And that is national merit semifinalists, <laughs> nearly doubling the number this year of Ravenwood, of which my son was one. Oh, so right. Well, I didn't really have any change, so this is how confident I am for BHS to stomp Ooh, on girl. RHS. All right. Somebody else? Mike. I've got a few things here. First off, we uh, spent the last 10 days in California driving from San Francisco to San Diego. And as much as we can be critical of many things in California, one thing they're doing right you want to go into a restaurant, you would have to have proof of your vaccination. And I think that's an excellent thing. Second thing, my grandson this week turned 16, got his driver's license, but he's not on my insurance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, third thing, Michelle here, by the way, is uh, Rotary royalty, her father and brother in Rotary, but more importantly, her mother was the executive director of the downtown club for 30 years. Glad to have Michelle here visit. And the last thing, I understand when Bart met Miss Donna, she took one look at him and said, my, you look an awful lot like my second husband. <laughs> he says, well, Miss Donna, how many husbands have you had? She said, one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. That's it. We We're not going to have any more happy books. We're done. We're done. <laughs> no, actually, I'm, I'm teasing. Set. I'm more over here. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited. I have uh, one of my best friends is. Uh, oh, okay. There you go. I'm really excited. I'm, I'm going to need your guys' help. So I want to get my one buddy, he's from Ohio, to come to move to Nashville. He's coming in this weekend. He can live anywhere. He's got a remote job. He might be picking Raleigh. So any tips on how we can get him here in Nashville? He's, he's a really good guy. And I'd love him for, for him to join Rotary as well. So he's a foodie. So we got some places oh, to uh, check out. But hope we have a hard sell this week. So I'm pretty excited about that. Give me your house. <laughs> 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 
an idea. <laughs> Is that got it? That it? Anybody We're else? We're having too to... much fun, y'all. Come on. <laughs> All yeah. right. Uh, at this point, we've got a couple of announcements. You want to go ahead, Jody, and tell us about something wonderful that you've set up for us? You just come up here. All right, you know, every chance I get to talk about the inclusive playground and this week something really exciting I beg urge each of you to check out our Facebook page. We have a very special video with our playground pals showing how who is going to benefit, but Tzatziki's through Sunday is giving us 15% of their proceeds for every online order and um, we're doing really, really well, uh, but I encourage you this weekend. Don't cook, order Tzatziki's. It's only the store in Brentwood. And um, we have some really exciting things to come, y'all. I'm so proud of this club. I'm so proud of each of you that have donated, each of you that's on a committee and working for it. And uh, we are gonna make those playgrounds happen. So thank you. And, and when you order online, there's an order code you need to use. It's called BRC, Brentwood Brewery Club. So just type in BRC and that's good through Sunday. So uh, order Tzatziki's and order tzatziki's and order tzatziki's so that's wonderful uh i don't know if any of you were planning on going to the conference with the uh president-elect in rotary in chattanooga on october the 2nd that's been canceled due to covid so uh don't go to that one uh <laughs> alan if you were planning on going just uh, uh, we have the uh tournament a week from monday y'all a week from monday larry you want to come make that even more important to us trying to recover from this happy books that's the book you're in the house aren't you oh, yeah. <laughs> okay 10 days from today we're going to have our golf tournament today is the last day i can get signs made so all those who are holding their signs out to give to me please give them to me today or tonight or email me or something i mean i know you've got them i know people are holding those out just for the last minute this is the last minute so here's some numbers for you just so you'll know what's going to happen a week from monday we got 128 golfers playing We've got 22 volunteers within our club working that day. That's wonderful. The golfers have a chance to win over $1.1 million in prizes in contest. Pretty cool. We have 178 sponsors who will be broadcast all over the golf course. Their names will be everywhere. Did a great job there. We've got $3,500 in prizes going out to the golfers just because they win a contest or they win their flight or whatever. So we've got some money going out there. We had a sales contest that was a hundred day sales contest. Remember that $300 for anybody that got two new sponsors, $500 for anybody that got $1,500 in new sponsors. Well, guess what? We have four qualifiers for that. And we're going to have that drawing on October the 15th. When I do my presentation and the wrap up, Devin McClendon, Jared Tanksley, Patrick Wright, and Mr. Mark McFerrin will all be in that drawing. So congratulations, you guys, and thank you. In the last two weeks, some, some members have shown up pretty good. Sheila Cleveland, Michael Heinemann, Jonathan Merck, Mark McFerrin brought in new members, new sponsors. Jim Ryan brought in new sponsors. Larry Faust brought in new sponsors. And Patrick Wright brought in three new sponsors in the last week. So good job, guys. Thank you. He's not here today, but I have to talk about the king. Y'all know who the king is, don't you? Jared Thanksley. Now, keep in mind what we've done and how many sponsors we've sold. Jared Tanksley in the last 30 days has sold 11 new sponsors. New sponsors. Now, remember, he had 20 last year. He sold 11 new. I'm not going to tell you his total. We'll, you'll hear that in October. But Jared has been busting it. And if there's not an example of how this should work, this is the example of how it should work. And if you ask Jared today, how did you do that? He's going to say the same thing we've been saying for two years. I just ask him. He goes in on business and he buys something. And he says, hey, while I'm here, can I talk to you about my golf? We have a golf tournament, Rotary Club, $350 host. Why don't you trying to do it? Yeah or no? Well, yeah, a lot of times. So Jared, the king, he's going to reclaim his title this year. He lost it last year. He'll, he'll reclaim it this year. We had a goal to raise $90,000 for the 
for the BRCCF. We've got a big commitment to the inclusive playground you just heard about. We've got a big scholarship commitment every year we have. So this money is important. Will we make our 90,000? You'll find out October 15th. So we're ready to go. I won't have much to say next week except see y'all on Monday, but thank you for everybody that has participated. Uh, we had 68% participation in our club this year. Uh, that's, that's not what we wanted. We wanted a lot more than that. We had 75% in 2019. So we're gonna work on that, but we're ready to go and it's gonna be a fun day. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, you missed the sign up. Larry, we're glad to have you back. Uh, and uh, obviously you worked really hard while you were sick too. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, whenever you work hard on this golf tournament and you have service hours, Please keep track of those and send those to Drew because there's a lot of hours spent on this. No telling how many Larry's got on this one for sure. Uh, and community, I mean, uh, uh, folks on committees, your committee chair is going to be sending in your makeups too. So that's really important because we are taking attendance again. Um, all right. It's time for our speaker. Finally, Rod. As much as I'd like to come up here and start telling you stories about these men that are sitting around this table, uh, I think we all want to hear what Shane has to say. But uh, I'll say this is that each one of these guys right here could come back and give us uh, one heck of a program on more than one occasion. So uh, keep that in mind when we're looking for speakers. Uh, Shane, I'm going to go ahead and get this ramped up for you right here. OK, so um, I thought I knew a lot about Shane Foster uh, uh, I, and most of what I knew about him was was basketball. And, uh, and you'll hear a little bit about this, but uh, what he's going to talk about today shows that uh, he's used the platform of basketball and the talents that he's been given uh, to do other things in life. And he's making a, an unbelievable impact, uh, not only here in Nashville, but throughout the United States. And again, you're going to hear about that. So Shane, if you'll let me, I'm going to go ahead and read this right here because uh, I can't get it all in if I start rambling. Uh, Shane Foster is the executive director of Amend Together and vice president of external affairs at the YMCA here in Nashville, Middle Tennessee. Amend Together is an initiative that engages men and boys to end violence against women and girls. He recruits, educates, and equips men and boys to serve as advocates for violence prevention and cultural change. <clears throat> Shane graduated from Anderson, or excuse me, Shane graduated from Vanderbilt University with a Bachelor of Science in Human and Organizational Development in 2008. During his time at Vanderbilt, Shane was named SEC Men's Basketball Player of the Year, All SEC four years in a row, NCAA Division I All America, and played for the USA team in the 2007 Pan American Games held in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. He was the Lowe's Senior Class Award winner an award given to the nation's senior leader in community, classroom, character, and competition. Foster finished his collegiate uh, basketball career as the all-time leading scorer, 2011 points, did I do that right? Okay. In school history and was drafted in the NBA by the Dallas Mavericks in 2008. He was inducted to the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame in 2009. He was inducted into the Vanderbilt Athletics Hall of Fame in 2010. And, uh, and was honored as an SEC legend during the two, 2016 SEC basketball tournament. He is a graduate of the 2018 Leadership Nashville class and serves on the board for the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, Nashville Sports Council, and Martha O'Brien Center Explorer Academy. Foster is on the advisory committee for the Joyful Heart Foundation to uh, <clears throat> prevent child abuse Tennessee, 100 black men of Middle Tennessee, and serves on the Vanderbilt University Athletics Committee. He most recently was selected Nashville's 2019 40 Under 40 Award winner and Nashville Emerging Leader Award finalist. Shane was recently recognized by Nashville Business Journal as a Power 100 Disruptor. Also, he is author of What Hurt Didn't Hinder, a story of vulnerability and perseverance showing that it is possible to reconstruct what it means to be a man, embrace our diversity, and raise everyone up in the process. Foster continues his contributions as a deacon at Mount Zion Baptist Church. Before I introduce you, I want to remind these guys that are sitting in this room right here what you did at Vanderbilt. So if you'll roll that. Thank you. 
440 to go here in Nashville. Now you got Foster down low setting back screen. He pops out top, takes the open three. Good again! 73-68, got to go fast. Shane, from 30 feet, Shane hit it! Timeout! 20 seconds to go. 18 seconds, Foster off the screen, gets another one. Pulls up from three-point range. Good! Oh, my gosh! 34 for Shane, tied at 74, 10 seconds to go. Rhodes guarding him, so they run the back door. Elliot slams Shane Foster. He's got 36. 84-80. 32 seconds to go. Shane Foster, long three, nailed it. Timeout. Oh, my goodness. Shane Foster with 39. And that was another 30-footer. Seven, six, five. Up top, Foster, four. Shane for three. Go! Oh! 2.7 to go. Here we go. Stewart, down court from midcourt. Launches it at the buzzer. It's so good. It's so good. The Vanderbilt Commodores have rallied to beat Mississippi State. 86, 85. Oh, Joe Fisher. That was another unbelievably contested three-point shot. That was a phenomenal. I did, there's, there's no words to describe what he just did in the second half in the overtime. Shane Foster, 42 points. Nine three-pointers all in the second half in overtime. I'm telling you, I, had, I have not witnessed something like that in basketball in a long, long time. What an incredible performance. And Shane hugging the family over here. This will go down as one of the great performances yeah. on senior night in history. I tell you, I, if, if you did not see this game tonight, then you missed something. Because this that may special. have been one of the most special performances by a Vanderbilt athlete that I think any of these Vanderbilt fans have probably ever seen. Thank you so much for, for inviting me to be here with you all today. Watching that video sometimes brings tears to my eyes. I said a prayer prior to this game. I said, Lord, this community has meant the world to me. When I got here in 2004, I was just a small, skinny, skinny kid from New Orleans, Louisiana. Grew up there during a time when New Orleans was the murder capital of the world. Saw a lot of things as a kid that the kids probably shouldn't see. I persevered. And there was a village around me in New Orleans that, that helped me every step of the way. And this Nashville Vanderbilt community embraced me the way that my, my New Orleans family embraced me. And I said, Lord, I just wanna say thank you. Let my play today just say thank you. And I'm just so grateful that God allowed me the opportunity to do that. Community is important to me. It always has been. It's the reason why I am who I am today. Um, Rod, thank you for that introduction. Thank you for always showing up. The people at this table here are a large part of my community. It doesn't matter where I'm going, what I'm doing. If I call, they always show up. This man, Barry Booker here, he's probably never heard me say this, but he's a large part of the reason that I am the kind of character person that I am. You see, basketball is one of those sports that People embrace you and you get access to stuff that most people don't get access to. You get tempted differently when you're a superstar athlete. But it's because of people like Barry Booker who live their lives with integrity, who are willing to sit you down and to talk about things that are not just basketball, about being a good father, about being a good husband, about being a good Christian young man. Thank you, man. 
I, I spent the first six years of my life growing up with my grandparents. Those people you saw me hugging in that, that video, my family, um, they mean so much to me. My grandmother just turned 85. My grandfather just turned 91. My grandfather was one of those gentlemen that you'll be honoring next year. My grandfather was a man of very few words, but he had two rules in our house. He said, you be respectful to adults, you be respectful to women. Anything else we can talk about and come to an agreement, but those two things are non-negotiable. As a result, I've embodied that in my own life. At six years old, my mom came to get me and I was gonna go live with them and she had married this guy who would be my stepdad. And I was six, so I didn't know what step meant, but I thought to myself, my dad is six, eight, five, eight, ain't gonna cut it. <laughs> we got into, off to a really rocky start. And over the next six years, I witnessed my mother be in an abusive relationship one that was physically, emotionally, and verbally abusive. Basketball was my escape. Basketball allowed me to get away from it. it allowed me to get out all of the frustrations and the emotions that I carried inside and never talked about. I was fortunate to go to Vanderbilt University. Could have gone anywhere in the country. I chose Vanderbilt because this resembled home. You see, in New Orleans, nobody's a superstar. You just, you're just people. You could be walking down the street and somebody will tell you, grab you and say, come on in here and get some of this food. Everybody's just family. And that's what Nashville was for me. And as you heard in the introduction, I've accomplished a lot of things on the basketball court and got a chance to beat the number one team in the country twice. It would be UT when they were number one, it would be Florida when they were number one, played in March Madness, got a chance to travel the world and play the game of basketball. I accomplished my dream of being drafted to the NBA. It was amazing to sit in that room in New York with my family, hear my name be called think about all the people who have contributed to me being in that moment. I was fortunate because I met a lot of great people along the way. People like Barry and people like Rod and Ron Borgaski and so many others who have great character. Just phenomenal people, not necessarily perfect, but folks who are doing the best they can. Folks who invited me into their homes, spent time with people and their kids and spoke at churches and conventions and schools and the whole nine yards, just all great people. And I retired from basketball after six years playing professionally. And I learned some things that, that shattered my entire world. I learned that one out of every four women experienced domestic violence in their lifetime. How many of you by show of hands could name at least four women in your life who you love and care about? Everybody in here, right? But one in four women experience domestic violence. One in five women are sexually assaulted. One in six women on college campuses have been raped. Nobody talks about it. This state that we live in that have brought us so much joy and happiness that we get excited about it. We raise our families in. This same state of Tennessee is sixth in the nation for men killing women. Sixth. Every single day in our country, three women are killed by an intimate partner. Somebody who says the same thing that I said to my wife this morning, that I love you. I had to ask the question, how? How is it possible for everybody to share all of these great values and come from great families and be incredible people? How is it possible that all of this can be happening in the presence of so many great people? What I learned is that there's a culture that exists that allows it to happen. It's a culture where we, we make excuses for the bad behavior of others. We say things like, well, you know, boys are just gonna be boys. 
not realizing this carries this anti-male implication that somehow we should expect bad behavior from boys and men. We, we make excuses. And then we don't believe people when they share their stories. We had an entire Me Too movement of people that we know and some that we didn't who said, yeah, that happened to me too. Yeah, that happened to me too. And those same good, well-meaning, predominantly men said, well, I don't believe that they did that. Oh, why is they just now saying something after all of these years? I know them, they, they play golf with me, they, their kids do stuff with my kids, they're, they're great people, they, they never do anything like that, as if, as if the duality of people doesn't apply to them. That stepfather was the same person who bought me my first basketball goal. He'd spend hours out in the yard teaching me how to shoot fadeaway jump shots and how to shoot over taller people. He sucked, but he taught me everything that he knew. <laughs> He spent so much time with me. He would always tell me, you know, you got, you got four sisters and two brothers. You're the oldest. You, they're going to follow your lead. So you got to be a good role model for them. He told me, you get one mom. You might by circumstance have a different dad, but you get one mom. You love your mom. You protect your mom with everything that you have. This same individual who, who provided so much great value to my life was the same person who caused the most pain. The duality of people. But when, when those things happen in our community, we just don't believe people. Not even realizing that oftentimes there's somebody in our own house, somebody in our community, somebody in our church, somebody in our Rotary Club who's saying, if you don't believe them, you probably won't believe me either. Which is how this issue of violence against women is literally the most underreported crime in the world. And as men, we walk around with this false sense of confidence, like everybody in our life is safe. Because we've been told our whole life that being a man primarily is about two things. You provide, you protect. There's some other stuff in there, but those two things are at the top of the list. So we walk around with this false confidence, like everybody in our life is safe, like things that are happening around the world is not happening to the people around me. But I'm here to tell you, it's just not true. I wished it were true, but it's not. It's astounding how many women and girls in our, in our midst, in our communities, in our families, have been abused by people who are supposed to love them. We started this program at the YWCA of Nashville in Middle Tennessee called the Men Together. And all we do all day, every day is teach men and boys how to value and respect women and girls. We do that in middle and high schools. We do that in corporations. We do that with nonprofit organizations. We do that in places of worship because we realize that if this is going to stop, it's gonna be because every single man who considers themselves to be a good man steps up to stop it. Not after it happens, but before. And the way that we go about doing that is by changing the culture. We gotta stop some of this language. We gotta stop, like, when you think about all the jokes and stuff, I've just recently picked up golf and like my stepdad in basketball, I suck, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> but there's not a time that I'm on the golf course where somebody's not making an off collar joke that has something to do with a woman. Nice putt, Alice. We just say it off the cuff as if it's, it's no big deal. We don't mean anything by it. It's just, it's just jokes, All right? It's a culture that we got to change because what happens is for you is just a joke. 
but to somebody else listening to it is confirming to them that women are less valuable, not worthy of being treated with dignity and respect. It's not comfortable. It's not a comfortable conversation. I get that. It wasn't comfortable for me either, but you know what's less comfortable? The fact that I had to witness my mother being in an abusive marriage. You know what's less comfortable? The fact that when you find domestic violence, you often find child abuse. And I had to endure that as well. You know what else is less comfortable? Playing ball in another country and getting a call from your little sister because her boyfriend punched her in the face. You know what's even more less comfortable than that? Knowing that I, the person that gets upset in the moment and wants to go and take care of it myself, I contributed to it. Because when I was in the locker room and the guy made a little joke referencing somebody's body, I let it slide. I shrugged it off. Because I, when I was on the golf course and the guy made that little joke, I didn't say anything. I was too concerned with keeping the status quo or fitting in, not wanting to rub up against how things are. Those days are over. Every single one of you who raised your hand to say that there's four women in your life who you love and care for, we have a responsibility. A responsibility to show up and be the good men that we say we are. Not just when women are present, but also when they're not. Being a good man has to mean something. It has to mean that I care, that I show up, that I hold myself to a higher standard, but most importantly, I'm gonna hold the people around me to a higher standard as well. It's not just the right thing to do. In many ways, it's the most important thing to do. I know that this, this conversation is not one that maybe we were prepared to hear today. But I got to tell the truth. I am who I am because of the community around me. But I do what I do because of that community around me. Every game that I played, especially at Vanderbilt, there were always, undoubtedly, there was always a mother in the stands who had their son with them. And they'd come up. They'd ask me for an autograph or they'd want me to talk to their son or take a picture. And every game I played, I was thinking about their sons. When I walked on campus, I was thinking about their sons because as a role model, they're going to do whatever they see you doing. So I'm going to leave you all with this quick little question. And you can bring it home and contemplate and really think about how it applies to you. But the question is just simple. What do people experience when they experience you? What do people experience when they experience you? Lieutenant General David Morrison has this quote that says, the standard that you walk past is the standard that you accept. Far too often, we're just letting things slide. And we're building a generation who's also going to let things slide because they saw us do it. We got to stand up and be the men that we're supposed to be. That's what leadership is. That's what being a good man is. Not just when people are looking, but even when they're not. What are they experiencing when they experience you? Thank you all so much again for having me. sit down we can leave have a, a small gift for you that you can write more books about what you do that's just an amazing method and if you would use this pen 
and sign this book. This is a book that we use to read to first graders and we tell them about Rotary, but we also tell them about the person that signed the book. And I hope I get to read this book to the first graders. But if you would sign that, we'll, we'll take that back and give it to our first graders. Yeah, you bet, thank you. I, I forgot to mention this, but I did bring some books if anybody is interested in the book that I wrote. Uh, they're over there on the table and uh, they're $16. I'd be happy to, to give them away and uh, sign them for you. Who am I writing this to? You first just, grader. You would just sign for first graders, right? Sign your name. Keep the pen. No, I keep yes, the pen. Yeah. Yes, Thank, you. Thank you so much. What a, what a moving message. Uh, we can't thank you enough for showing today uh, the man you are and for inspiring us to be good folks all the way around, whether we're a man or women. Thank you. Um, first of all, we're going to have a, uh, the next meeting will be September 24th. Uh, first of all, do we know what today is? It's the 17th of September, special day. Yeah. Boom, yes, thank you very much. Don't forget that uh, our freedoms were codified today and how wonderful that is. Our next meeting is the 24th. We're gonna have a great speaker then, but more importantly, we're gonna have a great big surprise then. So show up and be there because you'll get to celebrate with us. Um, any late announcements or reminders? We'll do that. Yes, ma'am. And that's what these flyers are all around. So the information is there. Um, any more late announcements or reminders? All right, we're, remember to put your chairs up against the wall and we're gonna put the tables up. And here's the final thing for a quote for the end of the time here. Think about this. I'm not gonna even read it. Just think about that the rest of the week. When hard times come, it's not the circumstances. All right. Uh, thank you again to all of our guests and visitors. Uh, Big Daddy, Bart, Ted, Ben, uh, <laughs> uh, Michelle, Mark, Barry, Ron, Rich, uh, Daryl. And we hope all of you will come back and visit us sometime in the future. If there's nothing else for the good of Rotary, we are adjourned.